All right, when we left off, we were at 240836. And there we are, 240836. Uh, Act 2, Quest 1. And there it is. Well, that took a second, but it caught up. So, Halls of the Dead and the Dry Hills for the Cube. Never going to finish that quest, ever. Oh, I mean, I guess I could get something imbued and then just sell it. No reason I couldn't get it imbued. Um, but I think I'll save that for later. Um, because I have several other hardcore characters, hardcore online, just like Melkadeth here. And I might actually use that imbue for another character. And see if I can't get something useful. Um, and whatever, whatever pops out is probably going to be assassin specific. So, I don't know how useful that'll be. But, um, let's see. The cube is important. The cube is our... Uh, our main space saver. And the cube is how I've got... Like, I don't have anybody in uh, Nightmare or Hell difficulty. Um, in fact, I haven't even beat Diablo yet. Um, I've beat... My furthest character has completed Acts 1, 2, and 3 and is in, uh, like, City of Dead, River of Flame, Act 4. I've entered the Chaos Sanctuary and uh, killed a bunch of the monsters there, but is having a bit of a rough time of it. And this being hardcore, I don't want to push it too much. So I'm trying to be patient, letting him level up um, until I'm comfortable clearing Chaos Sanctuary, and then I'll go ahead and break the seals and release Diablo and kill him. And then go smash his soul stone. Um... But yeah, the Haradra cube is is how I've got uh, some perfects anyway. I don't have a perfect uh, amethyst yet. I have a perfect everything else. Um, if I was going to do sockets, which originally I was thinking that Melkadeth, I would do sockets only, um, which is why I've collected a lot of socketed gear. Not these, obviously, but I I was collecting socketed gear for uh, for a while. Um, while I was planning on this video series. But I decided that, you know, putting things into sockets would effectively undo the entire point of not having magic gear in the first place. I was using mundane gear only. Um, and so, like, if I got a double-socketed helmet and a triple-socketed armor and then double-socketed uh, hands, uh, weapons, so if I, if I did something like I put perfect skulls in both of my weapons, I'd have four perfect skulls if I could get up to four perfect skulls. I would have four perfect skulls in my hand weapons. Uh, that's 8% life stolen and 6% mana stolen per hit per weapon. Um, so I could still go toe to toe with even some of the tougher people, the the like the bosses, and should do fine. Uh, the elemental resistances would be really the main weakness, um, and that's where things like this come in. Um, get a triple socketed shield as a backup, uh, so I could dual wield on on one set, and then my my secondary set a triple socketed shield with three perfect diamonds. Uh, that would give me the 20, 40, 60, 57 to all resistances, which in normal is really pretty good. Um, I would take less than half damage from all magic, um, which would be better than, you know, uh, putting like a perfect ruby and a perfect topaz and a perfect emerald. That'd be 40 for only three. 40 also for cold. Um, 
that would be 40% for three of the four resistances. Whereas if I put three perfect diamonds, that would be 57 for all four of the resistances. So really the diamonds are superior. Um, I wouldn't use amethysts basically at all. I kind of don't care that I don't have a, a perfect amethyst. Um, it's possible that rather than... Whoop, connection's been interrupted. Alright, we experienced some technical difficulties, so while the internet resets... Um, I can actually talk about this stuff. I don't need to be uh, in the game in order to talk about it. So I had considered originally uh, just doing a character that did no gold, no green, uh, no yellow, no blue. Um, which is why I was collecting socketed stuff. I had several characters that whenever they found something uh, socketed, especially if it was the maximum number of sockets, uh, I'd, I'd stash it and save it for this character uh, for this whole video series. But the more I researched the sockets, the more I found that really having a character that only does socketed stuff um, really would be no challenge at all, because if you judiciously choose what you install in those sockets, it, uh... It's kind of loud here. Uh, it... It comes out really, especially in the lower levels, it comes out to actually be more powerful than a yellow item, and most gold items, even. Um, you know, you get a weapon and you put two perfect topazes in it, uh, you're going to be dropping more elemental damage than anything that you can normally find in the game. Uh, even the gold stuff, even the uniques, um, you'll have a better weapon than what you can find in the game anyway. So it kind of ruined the whole point the more I thought about it. Um, you've got jewels that have no real pattern to them. Um, I mean, they do. They're, they are procedurally generated, but what I mean is the colors of the jewels, um, the sequencing of the jewels, there really is no pattern to them the way there is to, to runes and gems. Um, so the, the jewels are just kind of a, a catch-all. It's a, it's a bag of tricks. Um, and then the runes, especially with you when you get the rune names, you can get some really crazy powerful uh, combinations there. So there was really no point to it. it. It wouldn't be any accomplishment at all to take a character with all, uh, all items socketed um, through the entire game. So I decided not to do the socketing thing and instead just stick it out with mundane stuff. Um, so, I think that's about all I was going to say about that. Um, so yeah, uh, sticking with the mundane, no sockets, um, nothing installed in the sockets anyway. I mean, I don't, I don't care if there's sockets in the gear, but certainly nothing installed in them. And we made it to Act 2. Um, there's going to be some some rough battles coming up. The uh, I'm not looking forward to the maggot layer. Uh, those narrow hallways uh, make a lot of things really ineffectual. Um, I won't get a lot of help from my mercenary. I mean, at least I'm not a summoner. That would suck in those hallways. Um, but the maggot layer will be rough. The arcane sanctuary will be a little bit hard. Uh, there are a lot of goat people who I think are resistant to fire. Um, let's see. The uh, the big mummies, the hollowed ones, um, various other names. The, the the ones that are the giant mummies that wear the the. Uh, the, the big, like, it's like a horse skull uh, helmet sort of thing, 
and then they have a, 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 a big hook for an arm. They almost look like... Uh, what's what's that game where where people have a uh, like a, a, a giant hook that they, they catch a ball? It's not lacrosse, but they catch a ball and, and there's this, this huge hook and they can fling the ball with their with their hook to their teammates. I'm not, I'm not sure I know what it's called. Maybe at one point I did. But anyway, they have this this giant hook um, on one arm. Uh, those things have powerful poison, um, so I'll be trying to load up on antidotes for that. Um, Duriel, who's the Act 2 final boss, does cold. Unfortunately, I discovered on my highest level character, who's defeated him several times, uh, I discovered that the freeze duration doesn't matter, and cannot be frozen doesn't matter, and even thawing potions don't work. Uh, his freeze overcomes whatever uh, half freeze duration or cannot be frozen or, or thawing potion things that you have. He'd freeze me and I'd pop a thawing potion. Nothing happened. Um, so, and I don't think it's bugged. I think that's intentional. Uh, I mean, he is one of the lords of hell. He's, he's, I mean, he's a minor lord of hell. A minor, minor evil. I guess there's three prime evils and five lesser evils. Um, and Duriel is, is one of the lesser evils, but he's, he's still like a prince of hell. So, uh, the idea that some guy mixing potions, you know, collecting herbs and, and grinding them into a dust and mixing them in his uh, back room. The idea that he could do that and overcome the Prince of Hell's freeze is pretty ridiculous. I mean, it is a game, so who cares? Um, but anyway, that makes sense. So I'm not going to bother with the thawing potions for the purposes of that. Um, but I will bring antidote potions along, you know, one or two. Um, probably not a full stack in my belt. Other than that, uh, I think we'll just continue on the way we've been going. Wake of Fires is working well. There will come a point when I'll go back to the rogue encampment and use that reset uh, that Anya has for clearing Den of Evil. I'll use that reset to switch from Wake of Fire to the, the uh, lightning tree once I get down to death sentry. Um, but that'll, that'll be, let's see, I'm at level 16 right now. So that'll be at least 14 more levels before I do that because there's no point to doing that before uh, the death sentry. Uh, death sentry on that tree diversifies your damage. Uh, Wake of Fire is one element only, and so if you come up to something that's immune to fire, you're kind of screwed. Um, and you have to close in and, and go old school on them. Um, which is fine. We can get medieval for a little bit. Um, but with the lightning tree, uh, you're doing lightning damage down to the death sentry, which weirdly is in the lightning tree, but at the very end of the lightning tree, you have a physical and fire damage uh, trap. So between the, the lightning sentry and the death sentry, you have three different types of damage. You have the fire damage and the physical damage from the death sentry, and then you have lightning damage from the lightning sentry. And having three different types of damage is uh, good for overcoming immunities and resistances. Um, so that's a better tree. The Wake of Fire is available earlier. It's a level 12. It's available. And you have Fire Blast from the very beginning, which feeds into Wake of Fire. Uh, so that's handy for early on in the game, but once you reach... 30, it's, it's, or thereabouts, it's honestly better to switch over to the lightning tree uh, of the traps. Um, and I think that's about it. So let's go and see if we can uh, connect.
We'll see if the internet's back up, and then uh, we'll go and clear the maggot layer. Back again. Let's go to it. I don't think I have any waypoints yet. No. Oh, I even missed the sewers one. That's not like I'm gonna have to go back there anytime soon. Let's see, but we did. Yeah, we did complete that. So. That's not the way out. Pay attention to your map. And I do have a... Yep, got a load of scrolls. Superior light belt. And I'm wearing a superior belt. shooter games where things would come at you, shots would come at you billions at a time. Oh man, what were those things? Uh, Raiden, games like that. One would think that that would serve you well here, avoiding the lightning, but it doesn't because what you, what is graphically represented uh, as lightning on the screen is not necessarily where the lightning is. I've ducked and dodged back and forth uh, doing the the uh, bullet storm thing and still been hit. Uh, so so what is graphically represented on the ski screen is not exactly where the lightning is. Unfortunate, but there it is. I need mana. You sure do. on the ground there. That's interesting. <laughs> Too bad I can't loot this sword and that sword and that. Is that a spear there, I guess? Another spear and a shield. So 
So this is one of those places where I feel like, eh, I'm not really sure. Got all these, I mean, this is a game. I get it. And the game, you do what works in a game. Nobody plays GTA. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, that's speaking in hyperbole. In general, people don't play GTA because they want to be that person. It's a game. But I'm looking at these urns here, and I'm thinking, how old of a civilization is Luke Galane? And here I am, this raging maniac. Sure, I'm powerful. Yes, I'm going to go kill the Lord of Terror. But how much of a jerk do you have to be to just go running around everywhere destroying urns? I mean, how long ago was this thing made? And who made it? Zero one one six. At the very least, I'd like to get a level out of this. But uh, we're having some connection issues here. I don't know what's. I don't know whether it's me or the server. Uh, it didn't look like there were a lot of people on. I went and checked out the multiplayer action, and there really wasn't much going on. So I can't imagine there. There. Uh, Servers are overwhelmed. You're gonna shoot that guy. Oh, God. So I don't know what the deal is. More of these urns. I mean, if you think about it, they're really beautiful. They belong in a museum. Not enough mana. long in the desert. Spent enough time in the desert to know that. Nothing lasts in the desert. All these bones here and these bones here. I mean, you see it like in, you know, Bugs Bunny or whatever. 
goes to the desert and there's skulls everywhere. Overburdened. Are you too overburdened to pick up some potions? I am overburdened. Uh, I think I'll take a reju. Actually, what I should do is. Well, I mean, I'm going back to town anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, let's. Oh. 
So 2 to 16, 2 to 17, or 15 to 21. Now they are ethereal, which means they'll wear out fast. Just how fast, I do not know. So, 7 to 15, or 15 to 21. Well, I guess, uh, no reason not to, so let's go ahead and try out the Blade Talons here. And, uh, see how long they last. They should last a good while. And they're both socketed. For all the good that does. They should last for a while if I mostly focus on the Wake of Fire. Uh, 15 to 21 is great damage. I think I'll keep these for now, just in case. Just in case I have to fall back on I mean, I'm going to get this next level anyway, the Kestis. So I'll go from 2 to 17 to 7 to 15, so a lower high end, but on average much higher. So our average here will be is uh, 2 to 17, I think the other one's 2 to 16, yeah, 2 to 16. Uh, so 2 plus 16 is 18, divided by 2 is 9. So this does an average of 9 damage, and this one's 9.5. And, and this one is 7 plus 15 is 22, half of that's 11. So I'll go from an average of 9 or 9.5 to 11. Uh, keep in mind also, the percentage increase uh, only increases the basic damage. It does not increase any uh, like elemental damages or anything like that. So every little bit of basic damage, when you have something like the, the Claw Mastery that gives you plus X percent uh, damage. Having something with high one-hand damage and low elemental damage means that your actual damage output, assuming no immunities or resistances, your actual damage output will be greater than something that has low one-hand damage, the base damage, but high elemental damage. Um, because your elemental damage is not multiplied. Only the... Only the, uh, the oh, I can't do it with the mouse here. Only the one-hand damage. Um, so I'll go ahead and deposit that, and is my breast, oh yeah, it's way better, and then that's just stuff I've been saving for whatever. I think that I'm saving for a different act because it capped out the it was worth. Um, and I don't think I have anything that was meant to shift over. Uh, I don't have anything that was meant to, to come to her. Let's see, 45? 45? Uh, that's barely an upgrade. Actually, it's a downgrade. That's nice. How are light gauntlets, which are so much more further on in the game, how are they defense lower than the superior chain? It's actually kind of pointless. And this is barely more at strength 60. It's going to be so far into the game, and it's barely going to give me a, a boost at all. And, and these gloves aren't even magic. They're just they're, they're, uh, mundane gloves. Uh, this, the upgrade here, will be entirely for the additional slots. This will be a downgrade. What is with this plate? Plate sucks. Yeah, I guess I'll sell that. Later. Um. Ah, we're looking for the dry hills, and that'll be our, our first... Waypoint. Since I skipped the water. Hi there. Uh, 
a first waypoint since I skipped the one in the sewers. And the Harajim were very uh, forward-looking people putting waypoints in sewers. You know, just in case people needed to fast track down into the sewer, as one does. So I thought she was going to be a, like a, a, a champion or a unique or something, but no. Ruins, where are the archaeologists? same tripod, tripod style uh, torch as the Sisters of the Sightless Eye. So coming through here and doing all of this uh, slaughtering, there's a unique <laughs> name guy, not a unique guy. Doing all this slaughtering, like all these dead bodies, if we really wanted to get crazy. Uh, I'd say all those dead bodies, they're going to become a public health hazard here. Laying out in the sun, rotting, and the vultures and hyenas aren't going to come and clear it out, as they are meant to do, because I'm going... Whoop, I don't want to go into the far away, so it's not yet. <laughs> Just killed something. Because I am up and killing all of the vultures. Which means the scavengers that clean up all this mess are not going to be around to clean up the mess. Wow. Honestly, look at the craftsmanship on that. There's some very talented artists who not going to open it up just because I respect these non-existent people that much. Maybe the scorpions will clean up all the bodies. Since the scorpions are like functionally invincible.
used to know what these things are here. of some kind or another. Maybe a little baby yucca. Yucca? No, 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 not yucca. Agave? Is it agave? I squished a scorpion. It's okay. There's an infinite number. Or infinite supply. Not an infinite number, but an infinite supply. <laughs> ever clear the path of those things. If I remember correctly, my desert yucca looks a little more like these. That's not a yucca, that's a palm. That's a fan palm. These are actually two different kinds of palms. A fan palm, um, that's a frond palm. Not the scientific name, obviously. Alright, I think, uh, I think the waypoint is going to be upstairs. Yeah. 
javelins if they're throwing. Some of them go melee. Sword and shield. This is the dead. That's what I'm looking for. Ah! So look at the waypoint. Greetings. Greetings. Did we do 35 out of 35? 35. All right. So we're doing all right.
guys I was talking about before. They're, they're like regular mummies, but they're enormous. Um, and the way they were talking back in town, uh, they were mummies who somehow were super powerful. And... Whoop. Not enough money. Not enough money. Specifically avoiding busting up all of these urns. Like, I'll do what I need to do to finish the game, but I'm not gonna walk into somebody else's ancient halls of the dead and start busting up all of their pottery. Maybe I meant to do that in the game, but honestly, I'm just not going to do it. <gasps> I guess it's not a horse because it's got it's got long teeth there, and fangs. So it's not a horse helmet, horse skull helmet. I don't know what kind of skull it is. Alligator maybe or crocodile. I suppose it's meant to be. This is where the boss battle is going to be. Oh, listen to those traps go. Can't catch me. Faster than fast, quicker than quick. I 
I need mana. I mean, they're good talent, so... Burdened. We're going to 
I need to figure out. to see you. Good to see you too. Tell me help you. You can buy my stuff. That's how you can help. Quite a treasure there in that Horodric cube. Any reason According to Horodric the lore, to get back the cube can restore a Horodric staff. To do it, use the cube as you would a scroll. When the cube opens, place both pieces of the staff into it and use the cube's transmute power. You'll be pleased to know that the cube has other alchemical uses as well. Six gems plus one sword transmute into a socketed longsword. You may also transmute two quivers of crossbow bolts into one quiver of arrows, while two quivers of arrows yield one quiver of bolts. I must leave it to you to discover other formulae. It is an honor to serve you. Zero eight three six. We had a rough go. Got disconnected twice, but two four zero eight three six. We started at and we ended at three three two one one six. Three three two one one six. 